So with the French Open done and dusted, we had some massive changes in the rankings, pretty much at the top of the rankings as well. So serious ramifications. We also have a new world number one as well. Let's go have a look at the results of the French Open from last week. On the women's side, Iga Swiatek beat Jasmine Paolini 6-2, 6-1 in a very one-sided final, making it three in a row for Swiatek at the French Open over the last three years. Carlos Alcaraz, in the men's final, he beats Alexander Zverev 6-3, 2-6, 5-7, 6-1, 6-2 to lift his third Grand Slam trophy and his third different Grand Slam trophy and he's only one away from the career slam and also got a boost in the rankings after winning that title too. So two Two completely different finals between the men and the women's, but some big change in the rankings as well. All right, let's go have a look at who went up in the rankings outside the top 10 over the last couple of weeks. Ojeli Asim, he went up three spots after making the fourth round of Roland Garros, getting back in the top 20 after number 18 in the world. Navarro, she also went up seven spots to number 17 in the world, a career high for her at number 17, top 20 for the first time. And on Draver, she goes up to 23 in the world, which is a career high for her, 15 spots higher than last week after having a really good run, making it to the semis of the French Open. So some big results there and some big moves for some key players. Players that went down to the rankings outside the top 10, Green Hashinov. He went down four spots after failing to make the quarterfinals that he made last year at Roland Garros. So he's gone down to 22 in the world. Mukova, she's gone down 19 spots to number 35 in the world. Of course, having to pull out of the French Open. So lost a lot of points after making the final there last year. And Sloane Stevens also drops down a lot of spots to number 47 in the world, 12 spots lower than last week. Also losing a lot of points from this year's French Open. So a couple of players there that just couldn't perform or couldn't play the French Open and lost their points. All right, let's start on the WTA side of things. And there's no change at the top, which Fiance extending her lead as world number one after winning the French Open. We did have a change at the top three with Coco Goff going up to a career high number two in the world, overtaking Sabalenko, who got pushed down to number three. Rabakina stays in there at four. And a couple other changes in the middle with Vodrusova going up to a career high number five in the world, pushing Pagula down to number six. Of course, Pagula didn't play the French Open. And Paolini, she rockets into that number seven spot after going up eight spots higher than last week, which is a career high for her. First time in the top 10 by making the final of the French. Zhang stays at number eight. And with Paolini's rise, it pushed down Sakri two spots to number nine. Jabir went down to number 10. And Collins got pushed out of the top 10 completely. So Pellini, mover of the week, had a massive week and gets her first top 10 appearance. Let's have a look at the finals now for the WTA race to the finals. And Sviantec adds more points to her total. And she is actually qualified for the WTA finals. The first player to do so. And we haven't even played Wimbledon yet. So this is incredible. She's already qualified for the WTA finals. Sablinga stays at two with Rebecca at three. But Goff, she goes up to number four. And Pellini goes up to number five, which is one spot and three spots higher than last week. Pushing Collins down to number six. Zhang goes down to seven. Ostapenko goes down to eight. Kostruk stays at number nine. And Navarro, she jumps in four spots higher than last week to number 10, pushing Zachary out of the top 10 completely. So, Triantec already locked in to the WTA Finals. And of course, after Wimbledon, we'll start seeing a couple more players start qualifying as well because Sabalenka and Rabakina have had very good years. And if they keep playing well, especially on grass, they might even qualify alongside Triantec post-Wimbledon. Going over the men's rankings now, and we have a change at the top with Yannick Sinner going up to world number one by making the semifinals of French Open. Of course, Djokovic, unfortunately, unable to compete and try and keep that world number one ranking due to the knee injury. He's actually dropped down two spots with Elkara winning the French Open, going up that number two spot. So the two young guys have overtaken Djokovic and pushed him down to number three. Zverev stays at number four with Medvedev at number five. Rublev at six, Rude at seven, and her catch at eight. But there was a little change on the bottom. With Alex Dimonor getting back into the top 10 to number nine, two spots higher than last week. With Dimitrov staying at number 10, and Sidzipas gets kicked out of the top 10 completely, being replaced by Dimonor. So not too many changes to the top 10, but at the very top, huge changes, with Sinner becoming the first Italian male to become number one in the Open era. Going over the race of the finals now, and Sinner, he stays at number one with Zverev at number two, but Alcaraz, he goes up to number three, four spots higher than last time after winning the French Open, with Rude staying at number four, and Medvedev getting pushed down two spots to number five. Sidipas still at number six, with Dimonor going up one spot to number seven. Rublev, he's dropped down three spots to number eight, with Dimitrov staying there at number nine. And Novak Djokovic, despite not playing great at the French Open, he goes up two spots into number 10. So it's the first time we've seen him in the race of the finals for a while. And he pushes out Fritz, who goes down to number 11. So Novak Djokovic finally featured despite not playing overly well this year. Really interesting to see this shape up now, and it's really competitive, especially down the bottom half. And Djokovic slowly starting to get back, but he does have that knee problem, so we'll see whether or not that comeback lasts. So there it is. They are the rankings. Some massive changes on the men's side, especially up the top there with Sinner becoming one. Alcaraz number two, and now Djokovic at three. We don't know when Djokovic is coming back. He might not play Wimbledon. 
which means that he might even drop further down the rankings, which will be a little bit concerning and a little bit strange to see that for Djokovic. And of course, Sviantek just extends the gap. And Goff getting number two, that's great to see her getting to that number two spot. Wimbledon is going to be interesting, especially for those players just behind Sviantek and also uh, Sinner Alcaraz. And of course, if Djokovic plays, Djokovic as well. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the craziest part of the French Open for you? Is it the fact that Sviantek was so good? Or was, was it the fact that Djokovic, again, just couldn't play well and the knee coming up and being a problem? Or was it maybe Sinner and Alcaraz doing very, very well and overtaking Djokovic in the rankings? That's been the biggest surprise for me. Uh, great to see both those young guys getting the number one, two spots ahead of the next Grand Slam. But they're the rankings after the French Open. I mean, it's a massive change.